and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be discussing the theme of wealth and class in The Great Gatsby. I've been studying this text for the past two years but because my A-levels were cancelled I thought I might as well share some of the things that I picked up on. This is a presentation that I've been working on in the hopes that it will help some of you out if you are studying this text. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to start out with a fair amount of context. The example that I was on specified the importance of applying context for a historicist approach to text. So for Gatsby, the 1920s era marked a place of huge economic boom, there was wealth inequality, and particularly the 1920 Volstead, Volstead, not sure how to say it, but the Volstead Act enacted something called prohibition. This made alcohol illegal, which created a higher demand, which resulted in a rise of illegal trade, gangs and underground parties, allowing for some people to get rich incredibly fast by breaking the law. There was also this concept of new money, old money, in which class was compared within people who were the richest. The quote new money marked the people who were formerly of a lower class, who gained money rapidly, often illegally, as mentioned previously. Old money refers to the traditional upper class who often got their money from plantations. Essentially, the key difference is not the amount of money they had, but the class the person originated from. In the novel, Fitzgerald repeatedly suggests that money is worthless in comparison to class. This is something I'll be saying an awful lot in this video, I apologise. If we look at Fitzgerald himself, there's a lot of interesting context we can apply to and draw parallels to the character of Gatsby. Fitzgerald was from a lower class family but was exposed to the elite classes in his neighbourhood. Particularly, Fitzgerald's romances can draw great comparisons in linking this notion of class being a barrier to love. Fitzgerald had a mostly written correspondence with a woman named Ginevra King, not sure how to pronounce that, um, and she was from a much higher class than him. In the end, she ended their relationship as she got engaged with an upper class man. Fitzgerald's wife, Zelda, also held off from marrying him for a while until he was able to support her financially. Essentially, the author's experience with money and class preventing the success of his relationships could very well be echoed in how he portrays Gatsby's inevitable failure to requite his love for Daisy. The quote in the novel, rich girls don't marry poor boys, echoes this notion perfectly. A quick bonus is that Fitzgerald was part of a group of writers called The Lost Generation. Common themes in this literature included the loss of morality, the loss of romance and the idealising of the past which is a perfect link to Gatsby in case you wanted to add that. I thought that the epigraph is also quite interesting to look at. I never studied this and my information is from some research I did so if this interests you I'm sure you can do some more. And it says, then wear the gold hat if that will move her. If you can bounce high, bounce for her too till she cry. Lover, gold hatted, high bouncing lover, I must have you. This is very interesting as this is written by a fictional character named Thomas that Fitzgerald created. The character is known to write poems that ignore reality. The content of the poem Poem itself expresses that one has to adapt a new persona to woo a lover. This is Gatsby to a T. You know, James Gats puts on the image of Jay Gatsby, loses touch with reality and it inevitably fails. You can see simply from the epigraph that class is such a huge theme integral to the novel. So a quick overview on how class and wealth is presented in the novel would be that the plot revolves around how a lower class man, Gatsby, tries to woo an upper class woman but fails to keep her as his wealth is not from reputable sources. Fitzgerald references the upper class as restless and destructive, the lower class as victims of the upper class and there is a lack of physical accountability for the upper class. Both classes seem trapped in some way. If we look at the upper class first, there is a recurring theme of entrapment and confinement. A quote that I particularly like from the beginning of the book describes Tom and Daisy's house as a bright rosy coloured space, fragilely bound into the house by French windows at either end. I always find setting quotes interesting and this one I think reflects how there is a sense of rose tinted glasses within. Tom and Daisy can overlook some of their problems due to having wealth. That being said, the space is fragilely bound, suggesting that the pair are confined but the confinement 
confinement is weak. We see in the novel that both Tom and Daisy fall out of love with each other, indicative of this fragile strength. I find that the French windows are particularly interesting because while they are transparent, they do not provide freedom that doors and windows often represent, but instead act as something confining. I don't know if this makes even the slightest bit of sense. Essentially, the setting represents their fragile illusion of a happy marriage as members of the upper class. Right before Daisy gets married to Tom, she has almost an emotional reset. She goes from crying about the loss of Gatsby while heavily drunk to cleaning up and committing to a marriage within a very short space of time. It suggests how her true emotions must be stifled in order to follow out her expectations as a woman of the upper class. Even Daisy's first line, I'm paralysed with happiness, indicates how Daisy is discontent. Paralysis and happiness, the two words oppose each other and immediately illustrates the sense of entrapment. Fitzgerald also refers to the upper class as drifting quite a lot and being restless, suggesting a lack of happiness and roots. This can emphasise discontent and unhappiness and a sense of entrapment because of their class. You know, they're bound together by wealth rather than genuine love. Entrapment is another theme with the lower class and this is seen in the Valley of Ashes which is a physical symbol of decay. I've heard that you could interpret this by looking at how the lower class are almost getting consumed by society. There's a sense of exploitation, the linking to farming and wheat and there's also such a dehumanisation of the lower class particularly in chapter 2 with the descriptions of people being grey and almost blending in. If you take Wilson for example he's described as being a shell completely lost as a character, described as mingling immediately with the cement colour of the walls and Tom says that he's so dumb he doesn't know he's alive. What's also interesting is that Myrtle and Gatsby are the two lower class social climbers of the novel. Gatsby successfully social climbs, Myrtle tries to, but inevitably both of the characters end up being killed. I think this is perhaps an interesting message from Fitzgerald saying that regardless of what you try to do, you're fixated in your class and that class is inescapable. This could link to his criticism of class and the American dream. The fact that the Valley of Ashes is a train stop emphasises this entrapment. Middle and upper class passengers only have to stay there for up to half an hour and then physically leave the area on a train. This is unlike the lower class which are physically trapped in confinement. The train opposes the stagnancy of the lower class. Another symbol of class divide between old money and new money, so specifically the rich, are the eggs. I'm going to rush through this bit because honestly it's not my favourite image and there's a ton of stuff on it that would be far better than anything I could come up with. The similarities yet differences of the eggs emphasises the differences that prevent Gatsby or any new money people to successfully gain in their class. Nick's house being squeezed between the two could link to his supposed unbiased narration but that's a whole other topic. Next, Gatsby and Daisy's relationship. This is the focal point of the theme, illustrating how class is the destroying factor of relationships and dreams. Whether Gatsby actually loved Daisy or her money, his inability to reach her socially prevents their love from being actualised. The couple are repeatedly regarded as something that shouldn't be happening by characters like Nick, Jordan and Tom. And this emphasises that they shouldn't be together and that class mixing will not work in this society. Gatsby does mimic the courtly lover who suffers, pines, longs from afar for the unobtainable woman. I think it's interesting how Fitzgerald draws comparisons between unattainability and class, linking further with the idea of how class is a barrier to love. There's a critic, Catherine, who talks about how Gatsby and Daisy's relationship isn't emotionally developed at all, which is something that Fitzgerald himself reflected upon. Personally, I think the lack of emotional development and the lack of perspective told only by Nick emphasises the futility of the relationship and how unrealistic it is because it is founded on a dream. In regard to Gatsby's class illusion, now I'll try to whiz through this because I feel like I'm taking a while, it's particularly interesting that Gatsby's military uniform is described as a cloak and the biblical imagery and climbing a ladder to a secret place being associated with Daisy. It's interesting how he associates a dreamlike place with Daisy. You can very easily say that perhaps he isn't really in love with Daisy, but it's the pull of being successful and going against his early life that really draws him to her. The green light is another iconic symbol, the light being something representing hope to Gatsby, yet also 
a barrier between Daisy and Gatsby. The light isn't even something physical that Gatsby can grab, emphasizing further that the class divide between them. Fitzgerald illustrates that Gatsby doesn't even have a real chance through this. And a critic has linked the green light to a traffic signal, which is a very interesting image. Expanding further on class as a barrier to love, here are some quotes on Daisy's reaction to the truth about Gatsby's wealth. I find it interesting how Gatsby's facade is likened to a card house, emphasising its fragility. The quote at the bottom is also one to look at, saying that Gatsby was, quote, defending his name against accusations that had not been made. The fact that Gatsby is already incredibly defensive, even though things hadn't actually been brought to light, emphasises how even though Daisy and Gatsby were in a passionate relationship, they didn't truly touch upon the truth on how Gatsby made his money, emphasising how their relationship might have been more fickle. On a podcast I was listening to, Maureen Corrigan actually said that Nick telling the story quote, forecloses all possibilities for Gatsby and Daisy's relationship to thrive. You know, you only hear the story from Nick. So Fitzgerald is emphasizing through this how the relationship is destined to fail. You're not supposed to support it, but to see the flaws in it being a dream and too idyllic. So here are just some quotes on the clash between the new money, old money concept I've been going on about. I think Tom particularly embodies this clash. The quote at the bottom where he says, some big bootlegger, I didn't hear it, I imagined it. A lot of these newly rich people are just big bootleggers. Tom doesn't even have to know Gatsby to know that his wealth is from illegal sources. Another critic I found very interesting talked about Gatsby and rumours and gossip. How at the beginning of the novel, Gatsby is an enigma. You hear all these rumours about Gatsby because no one really knows who he is. And the critic says, because so little is known about Gatsby, it becomes difficult for people around him to assign him a social status. And as a result, Gatsby benefits from the gossip because it hides the truth of where he actually got his money from. This is kind of random, but I think that the side characters of Mr. and Mrs. Mickey in chapter two are used by Fitzgerald to further emphasize how class acts as a barrier to love. In fact, this happens before we find out about Daisy and Gatsby, perhaps done to emphasize how regardless of who, class affects many relationships. Mrs. Mickey says, I almost married a little tyke who'd been after me for years. I know he was below me, but if I hadn't have met Chester, he'd have got me. I think this is just so interesting because she's basically saying that she only married Chester because he was of a higher or the same class as her, much like Daisy and Tom. It's another case where love failed because she picked wealth. There's another quote where she basically tells Nick that Mr. McKee had photographed her 127 times during their marriage. The McKees are such a minor couple who feature for hardly even a chapter, but even here you can see just how the couple is together by status. Mrs. McKee is emphasising numbers over sentimentality, and it's hard to see genuine love between them. Some queer theorists also believe that Mr. McKee and Nick had an affair on the party, which further emphasises how the marriage of the McKees is not found on love. I've touched on structure a bit already but I think it's worth recounting the impact of structure. The fact that the story is out of chronology means the narrative is constantly jumping from past, present and future. The fact that the whole novel is told from Nick reflecting back, I mean that's something to analyse in itself. It emphasises the impact of the past, which in this case would be Gatsby's lower class history as James Gats. Daisy and Gatsby are given no real perspective and it's all down to Nick's interpretation. It's very interesting that when you think that the whole novel is told by Nick, you know, he says that he's, quote, unbiased, yet some descriptions of Tom, Daisy, Myrtle, they are just so incredibly biased. And the high romanticism he puts with Gatsby as well, you know, it's very, it really makes you change your analysis when you think of it all coming from one man's perspective, as opposed to having fair perspectives. So when it comes down to the author's intentions, if I had to recap my interpretation of what Fitzgerald was intending. I would say that he is unveiling the inescapability of class, regardless of the American dream, even if people make it and gain a lot of money, they are still limited by their class. In addition, he looks at the strain that wealth will put on love, mirroring his own experiences, and he does put a kind of judgment on decadence and the upper class, or Nick does, depending on whether you think Nick reflects Fitzgerald or if Nick is someone else in its entirety. These are just the final points to summarise what I've been saying. I do hope this has made some sense. Essentially, the novel looks at 
the sense of entrapment in both classes. The lower class are trapped physically in places like the Valley of Ashes, but the upper class are trapped more metaphorically by society and better yet by themselves. Money and class outweighs and overpowers love and class is more powerful than money. We can really see Fitzgerald's cynical view on class and money and perhaps how even class can corrupt or stifle love. I really hope this has been helpful. I will link the PowerPoint I've made in the description box below in case that will be helpful. Please leave me a comment down below if you've got any questions or feedback. I might be doing some more of these in the future, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching and take care. Bye.